Hey, everybody. Welcome to episode three of Curling in the Squat Rack. I am your co-host, uh, Chad Vandal. And as always, I am joined by Syphysis and our good friend, Texas Stormer. I'm very happy to be here. Feels uh, like, a, like a warm, warm, fuzzy home. And uh, thanks for having me, guys. I haven't done it in a little bit. Yeah. This is pretty cool. See, that makes me happy, though. That that makes me happy that that it's it's working. People are following it and doing it. That's that's outstanding, man. Yeah, that's yeah. Wow, that's a, that's great. That's great. No, it's, it's something that like Tex and I and a couple of the other OG guys have talked about a couple of times. You know, like because there's there's a solid like six, seven, eight of us that you know we were around in the in the glory days of 2015 when this whole thing got started and we're not on Twitter anymore. And too, too big have, for Twitter. They kicked us out. Yeah. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> no. Um, but it's just, we just got tired of the nonsense and you know, it got too difficult to continuously just come back and back and back. But that thing that we like kind of started as like uh, a way to keep ourselves going is still going. And it's, it's like, super cool it, it, you know it's like a little legacy going while we're still around yeah speak of hiatus I, I don't know probably can talk about this i ran into vandal irl which was fucking awesome we so, did we yeah. did that. that was a long time coming <laughs> yeah. so a lot of story i don't know how much we can tell but it was uh, it was a really uh good time. no we had a great time we went to the gym like basically every single day every day uh we nearly killed ourselves trying to deadlift 500 pounds Yep, caught a. I almost, pat, I almost blacked out. Yeah, <laughs> uh, pounds. we hit a bodybuilding show and watched a bunch of kids powerlift. That was awesome. Um, and Sue, remember Sue, the ninety-year-old? Oh, that's oh, this ninety-year-old lady who basically like won our hearts. Um, yeah, she was doing the bar, and then they added like washers, and then they added like <laughs> washers and some pennies. And she did all three lifts. She she <laughs> no red light. She was good. Yeah. That was a good but, time, though. No, and it's it it just can it it reaffirms the thing that that we've said, both of us have said, get off the internet and go hang out with each other. Yeah, it's better. Like do wholesome better. things, pick heavy things up, put them down, go eat meals together. Like this whole online super duper amazing lifting friends and family thing that we've created, it's a million times more powerful when like you are like sweating together and spotting each other on lifts and pushing each other and learning stuff teaching each other stuff oh heck yeah that's the key yeah. so yeah, the 500 is still you guys are still racing right i mean did you get it? it went about halfway up so yeah, if you, i was about to say it, i got together. it uh, i got i got it about like yeah if we added the inches that we both were able to pull it up off the ground together we may have gotten a rack pull may, yeah maybe well, i seen chad's <laughs> his was uh I don't think he got it quite to his knees. It was close. No, no, no. I think I think we're calling it a fair four inches off the ground. <laughs> um, we'll go ahead and answer this question real quick, just because it's we are talking about deadlifts. Jacob Mosner asked about the deadlifts are bad. Uh, it's because this one guy who's a power or a uh, strong man said that on Joe Rogan. Yeah, said yeah. that deadlifts are are. Deadlifts really don't help anything unless you're trying to get better at deadlifts, and you should be doing power cleans instead. No, one, everybody took that part out of context. I that, think uh, Joe Rogan doesn't even lift. Oh, he lifts. He, he definitely lifts. Joe Rogan uh, is a may not deadlift though. Yeah, no, he doesn't do much. He, well, he's he a, lift. I would say a glorified CrossFitter. He like just kills yeah. himself. All he game. wants to do is he, all he wants to do is talk about shaved gorillas and DMT and jujitsu and jujitsu. Jiu-jitsu is cool. Okay. Bow hunting. There's bow hunting. All right, I talk fine, about bow hunting fine. all the time. But, yeah. No. All right. But like, no, there is, there's a reason that the deadlift is part of the big three and the big four, right? It's, it's a, it's a massive compound movement that is going to recruit muscle and energy and boost your testosterone. It's, it's a fantastic lift. You should be doing it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Enough of that. So let me throw something Lane Norton said, uh, somewhere uh twitter call it twitter he um 
he basically said, I've looked at a lot of people that have trouble developing their backs and everyone that I know that has a broad, well-developed back deadlifts. And it's totally allegorical evidence. He's not citing any science, but it's true. I mean, if you want a good back, man, I'm sorry, dude, you got a deadlift. You got to do it. Well, that, I mean, like my, uh, my app, I use fit notes for Android free for anybody that's uh, looking for a good, uh, workout recorder, uh, it it's got deadlifts under back, not under legs, which I you know found kind yeah, of I, odd. I do deadlifts um, on my when I was doing um, a, a body part split, because um, that was one of the things that uh, Tex converted me to. He converted me back to uh, full body, and it's it's I'm loving it. I'm I'm losing massive amounts of body fat. Um, but uh, I do I was doing deadlifts on back day. It was the primary lift on my back. Like almost everything else is accessory work. Yeah, I would see. I'd see that'd be a pretty good uh, idea if you're doing a bro split like that. You know, you don't want to squat and deadlift. Well, you can't. Like I've, I'm doing an upper lower right now and squatting and deadlift, and you do a squat and then you deadlift. It's, uh, it's definitely different. I, I'm a full body guy. I've done it for a long time, and now, well, not a long time, but for most of my lifting career, and now I'm doing this uh, upper lower. And uh, with 60 second rest periods, and it is just, it's killer. I, I can't believe 60 second rest periods was that much of a difference. It's a big one. <laughs> yeah. That, I mean, so you're trying to bring the fat down? No, I'm actually uh, trying to power build is what it is. Okay. So it's like trying to get bigger, but, or trying to gain, get stronger, but, uh, you know, stay f- cut, I guess. I yeah. don't want to end up fat, that's for sure. I got you. Yeah, and that'll do that. It, I don't know. I'm trying to think if that's going to inhibit your growth. It, it, it might, might not. I mean, as long as if you're getting bigger, you want to take things to failure, do things like supersets. Yeah, that's I mean, the way. It uh, doesn't matter if you're hitting failure. The, it's like it's it's a old school. It's like what uh, Arnold used to do with the Golden Six, where you want you have four sets and you have so many reps that you got to complete, but each set you want to take to like an RP nine. Yeah. You know, so then the first set you'll get 13, 14. The second set you'll get nine, third set. You know what I mean? I mean, oh, gotcha. Yeah, that's brutal. That'll yeah. get you big. It, so you're really, you're really doing like a, a giant set of, of just one, one set, and the, the reps are coming down drastically because you're not getting rest. Yeah, you're only, yeah, exactly. You're only getting that's 60 huge. seconds rest. So I got you. That'll get you big. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Rep goal, rep goal progression is what they, uh, is what they call it. Bare bones. That's if anybody wants to look it up, you can look it up. Viking bare bones program. It's like a, yeah, it's pretty good. I like it. But, uh, this week we're actually talking about, uh, fat acceptance, fat acceptance. Gosh, dang it. Acceptance. There we go. (laughs) It took three times, but we got it. Proof proof uh, that it doesn't exist right there. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, it's it's absolutely retarded. Um, you know, I understand the idea of loving one's body, but to try to say that there aren't risks to being fat is is absolutely hilarious. No, yeah, um, no, it's it's. I mean, you and I kind of talked about this a couple of days ago, and I mean, we can go back and pull the article up if we need to. But you know, on on the surface, okay, like yes, loving yourself, like self. Self love, self care. I think that's the phrase that the kids are using these days. You you should like yourself, right? It's it's part of you know like adult adult development. But I think part of loving yourself is also being able to have an honest conversation with yourself about like your your health. Um, you don't have to be a power lifter or a bodybuilder or a crossfitter or a strong man or you don't have you don't have to do what we do. What we do is um, kind of out there. It's a little bit extreme. Um, Can I, let me, you know, I, if go you, ahead. Go ahead. If you don't lift weights or exercise in really any way, you don't have the right to love yourself. That's that's Ooh. my take. Sorry, okay. you got to uh, earn fair it. Fair enough. You, you got to win to get love. That's how it works. Right. No, and I mean, <laughs> I, I I would hundred percent agree with you. My my the my the, my biggest point was that. For health reasons alone, right? If you you know if if you do nothing other than go for evening walks around your neighborhood, um, you're you know, I mean, you might shave six months off of your death clock, but you know, uh, it's it's one of those like you, anybody. It doesn't matter how slow you're running around that track. You're lapping the person that's sitting on the couch 
I think that's a quote from you know Gandhi. Yeah. But um, but you know, and I I see yeah, chubby good. dudes in the gym all the time. Um, I see women uh, postpartum in the gym all the time. And my favorite, I have I have two amazing success stories that um, that I like to talk about is there is in my current gym, there is a husband and wife, right? She just had a baby. I swear to God, he's still pregnant with triplets. Right? Yeah, there's a lot of that. I've seen it There's too. a lot of that, right? Yeah. But to their credit, nearly, and we must have similar life schedules because almost every single time that I'm in there, whether it's a weekday or a weekend, I see them either coming or going, right? They will... I mean, and, and I've, I've seen this guy, he's probably dropped 15 pounds, right? That's good. She's so. probably dropped uh, at least five. I don't know. Like she's obviously wearing different workout clothes than when she first came in because they don't fit her anymore. Um, and they've got a brand new baby. Like literally mom will push the stroller around the perimeter of the gym while dad does a set and then they swap. That's how you get it done. And I mean, like I have, I have gone in there with my son and like the dad looks over and you know, like, I'm like, Hey, you ready for this? And he's like, I can't wait. And it's just the coolest thing in the world to like see two people that are brand new parents that have taken the personal responsibility for their health because, and I'm, I'm going to go ahead and say it. It's because they had a kid. It happened to me. I know it happened to you. I knew yeah. you were about to say that. <laughs> That's true, though. The, you know, the thing, I don't mean to, to bag on, like, fat, fat acceptance, but what if, just hypothetically, the word fat acceptance and love your body or love yourself actually meant not how you feel about yourself, but what you do with your body. Like, do you actually, with your actions, show love to your body by taking care of it? Or are you just saying, I feel like I love my body, even though it's gigantic and fat? Because those are two really different things. Yeah, like that's you're, what you're, I think. You're showing uh, it. I think that's exactly kind of what this article uh, puts out. I'm going to go ahead and put it on the screen. You know, uh, fat is fat is not the problem. Fat stigma is um, that idea. You know, that's a very good thing to say. You know, fat stigma is a problem, but to say that fat isn't the problem is also plum retarded. You know, yeah. it, it's it's one of the things where uh, send an incorrect, you know, they're actually saying health experts in quotations acting like these people that have degrees don't know what they're talking about by saying, you know, it's basically saying that the uh, emotional effects of being made fun of Are is worse, worse for your body than yeah, no. the... No, I mean, it's, it's when you look up the statistics on what is killing more Americans, it's not drunk driving, it's it's not, um, you know, the it's not gun violence. It's not uh, hate crimes. It's heart disease. How do you get heart disease? By becoming morbidly obese. You know, I have for 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 business or pleasure. I've traveled all over the world. I've been to Europe. I've been to Asia. I've been all over South America. America is the most fat country I've ever been in. And I've been in the third world. I've been in the first world. It doesn't matter where you go. It's hands down, the fattest. We are country. disgustingly fat. Tex, I know you've been all over South America and other yeah. places too. It's, it's not even for, up for question. It's, there is no debate about this. Yeah. Um, and I, it's a big problem. And it's, it's, on the surface, it's an easy solution, right? Um, you know, what, what's the solution? What's the solution? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to blow your mind, right? Um, <laughs> calories in versus calories out. There it is. Right? There it if is. If you burn more than you take in, you will not be fat. And so right there, the, the whole fat acceptance where they say fat is not the problem, fat stigma is. They, that whole hypothesis wants you to believe that it's not as simple as that. That some people are just fat because they're fat or it's genetics or because they have a thyroid. It's bullshit. I'm sorry, it, it's calories in have to be lower than the calories you expend through basal metabolic and then work, period. And they don't want you to believe that. That's why they're talking about it. So I want to read this one paragraph just because it's, it's the epitome of what you just said. And this is from Scientific American, which is, is absolutely amazes me that it comes from a, a publication like that. When the culture and the medical world are constantly pushing the idea obesity needs to be eliminated, obesity in quotes, 
it's not the fat cells that are feeling that stigma. It's the fat people. This hierarchy. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> this hierarchy of bodies is nothing new. With roots in racism, <laughs> slavery, and every other attempt to rank bodies, we can no longer pretend that being less likely to be hired or get promotions, being paid less, receiving biased medical treatments, or Bias. socially excluded and bullied are attempts to help people. Be that healthier. train is never late. That train is always on time. <laughs> well, but, and all right. So, Tex, as somebody who has done some hiring and firing, um, from a from a pure business perspective, we're going to leave race, religion, creed. We're going to completely ignore that, right? Right. As somebody who maybe has to worry about um, a company's health insurance premiums, right? What? Who are you much more likely to hire or not hire? Right? There's no reason for you to hire a, a high risk person when you know five, six, ten years from now, um, you're going to be eating a, a really healthy, uh, hefty uh, medical bill as part of your. You know what I'm saying? Like it. it go ahead. That's easy. So, yeah, that's easy. Um, for me personally, I, I actually prefer military. I prefer people with computer experience. I prefer people who actually lift weights. Um, and, you know, this is what I prefer. I'm not saying you know, I can't say that I don't hire certain people, but the reality is if I'm picking the optimum person, it's going to be someone who lifts weights or does something like CrossFit that I can visibly see because that means they don't drink too much. They don't do too many drugs. They obviously show up on time to something. And when they show up on time, they put in work and they get results. I mean, you see that right there with their bodies and what they've told you about their workout, right? That's easy. And so yeah. the we are walking is, resumes for ourselves. You have to be. You're supposed to be, right? Yeah. And so the converse is true, right? About about fat people. I mean, people they, they want to tell you, well, it's fat stigma. No, it's not. I mean, you can be what you want to be. It's I don't advise it, but the reality <laughs> is, when I see a fat person, I know without a doubt that they're eating more calories than they're expending. I I just it's in science like you know it and so you see that and you're like okay well they don't get that simple concept or if they do they don't have the discipline to implement it uh and that's kind of your answer right yeah so yeah. to uh to kind of uh actually give some advice as far as you know you want to say calories in versus calories out but at the same time i would like to say that uh if you limit carbs whenever you, whenever you are obese just because of the insulin spikes you know, calories in, calories out uh, is great, but carbs are, they don't sustain you. You know, you, you get hungry quicker. You, uh, this so is all true. If this you, is all true. If you lower here's your the trick, carbs. Here's the trick, though, on, on carbs. If you can eat a Snickers bar, and, and what you just said, Sis, if it's very true, it's going to spike your insulin. 30 minutes later, the insulin is going to store it as fat, and it's going to make you hungry again. But if you have the discipline to not eat any more calories and to keep your calories the same as someone who didn't eat that Snickers bar, at the end of the week, if you average it out, it's going to be the same. The problem is most people don't, including me. When I eat sugar, it spikes my insulin. It does horrible things to me, and I just I don't do that. Um, so, the, yeah, I mean, you're right, but someone like Lane Norton, for example, would take us both to task and say that's actually not true because they've shown that people who eat even simple sugars or fast-digesting sugars and cannot go over their calorie limit still lose the same amount of weight. So, I mean, I hate being the devil's advocate on this, but... Uh... You know, you can look at, you need a certain amount of protein in general, Absolutely. too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if you weigh, you know, if you, you know, I always use port protein by uh, lean body mass. You know, let's say you only have 150 pounds lean body mass and you're 300 pounds, you know, you're 50% fat, then you don't have much room for carbs. So no. you, you see what I'm saying? So I using do. that and idea I, I that, that you want to like I, just, I hate saying keto's awesome or anything like that because I'm not saying that. But no, it's, it's so, and that's one. Of, that's one of the things that Tex and I had talked about uh, many moons ago. I mean, so keto diet, it will work for a short time. What was the other one? The Atkins diet will fasting. work for a oh, short time. Fasting, intermittent they, fasting, they only will work, work. They only work if if Keiko, yeah. calories in, calories out, balance. Exactly. Out. Correct. Only, yeah. If, yeah. I definitely agree. At with the that. end of the if day, you're... if you are burning more calories than you are consuming, that's all that matters. How you intake your calories, to me, is honestly irrelevant. If you sit down and you eat one giant meal a day, okay, fine. Cool, great. If you spread it out over 16 meals throughout the entire day, okay, fine. I don't, personally, yeah. I don't care. 
Um, yeah. I'm a I'm a three to five meal a day kind of guy. It makes five, sense to me. Yeah, five is optimal though. If you're doing yeah. protein, you, you need to have five meals of protein or with protein in them. And this is from, uh, oh gosh, what's his name? Muscle PhD. He was in Generation Iron, but he posted a study about that. That you actually get more uh, muscle growth out of five intermittent meals than three big ones that each have the same amount of protein as the mm-hmm. five. Yeah, it's because your body can only process so much protein at one time, right? That's, that, I think that's right. And I think it has to do with the, the synthesis going on for a period of time. So when you eat a big one, you know, it, it hits hard, then it drops off. Uh, but if you're eating the five, it keeps it sustained. So the muscle synthesis keeps going. Um, I, I don't really, I, to be honest, I don't know the mechanism behind it. I just know that that's one of the things he said. Five, five intermittent protein meals is better than, you know, three big ones or even one big protein meal with two, you know, smaller ones. Um, just eating throughout the day is better. Yeah, having having the the pocket eggs, right, Chad? Huge. Yeah, man. I love my pocket eggs. So yeah, but no, to answer it's... your question, Sisyphus, about the protein, you're you're absolutely right. I mean, that's that's basically how I eat. It's it's a, it's very paleo, but at the end of the day, it's different because I'm really insulin sensitive. I guess that's how you put it. Where I eat sugar and my insulin goes up quickly. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, so it just doesn't work for me. I can't do the kind of things that people do where they eat a lot of, you know, post-workout or inner-workout carbs, where they do donuts. Or, I just can't do it. I mean, uh, if I eat anything sugary in the morning, I'm screwed for the whole day because yeah. it spikes my insulin. But that that's me personally. And I think everyone's just different. You you know, that's why Kaiko is so great because you can mix and match it however you want. But at the end of the day, it's got to balance out like a checkbook. That's what, yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely right. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, I, yeah. Your daily average, if you will, for seven days or however you want. It doesn't even matter. Just for a period, you know. Or if you're like me, you wake up at 3 a.m. and eat pot roast. You got to log that. <laughs> you're like, what day is it? I don't even know. Is it midnight? Like, what do I do here? <laughs> yeah. No, I'm, I mean, after, after, after midnight, days, that's day. Yeah, yeah. So there's that most... weird sweet spot where if, if I eat it at eleven fifty nine fifty five, by the time it gets to my stomach, what day is it? I it's don't so know. Bad. I know. So I don't have to log it. And most apps, most apps will reset at midnight, right? That's what they do. <laughs> so you know what I was doing? This is this is so bad. This is this is a, a total trend balone story. But you'll you'll sit. I would literally sit from eleven to twelve, and my wife's like, "How do you go to bed?" I'm like, "No, nah, I gotta wait till twelve oh one so I can eat this pot roast." <laughs> So I was like, <laughs> screw this. I'm moving my time up to 11. Just arbitrarily now, my day starts at 11 p.m. the day before. So I can go to bed at a decent hour. Let's yeah. just, now I'm changing the clock on my phone. Exactly. So that it's, my phone is set to, my phone is set to mountain time. <laughs> yeah. I go, to, I go to court an hour late and the judge is like, what's going on? Why are you late? You're like an hour late. Do you even lift? What is wrong with you? <laughs> My day starts at 11. What's wrong with you? We're on mountain time. We're altitude training. Do you even count your calories? What are you at right now? Like 4,500? Fat blob. Uh, (laughs) Oh, man. Good good stories. (laughs) Yeah, but you know, you're talking. We went to the pool today. and We we go to this kind of far out gym where they have a pool. Uh, It's not our home gym, but, you know, take a little girl out there. And all the, like, all the moms are in there. And they're in, like, their one-piece muumuu tarp. (laughs) Suits. <laughs> and they do this move where they go into the kitty area and they sit down like a, a like a little seal to mm-hmm. hide their butts you know and, and yeah. i was like you know she was she's like are they they're judging me I'm, of course they're judging you they hate you right now they hate you right now they exactly. literally hate you but you know guess what you're the one who puts the work in yeah. so my i'm voting for you and a lot of people are the reality is but the, the whole truth what kills me is you're they're at a gym they're at this gym where mm-hmm. all you have to do is walk upstairs you put the kids in daycare that costs, I don't know, $10 for two hours yeah. and you can work if out that. if that, yeah. and, and you know, in 16 weeks, just four months, if they would just do that before the pool or even after the pool, mm-hmm. they, they would half of their, their fat would be gone. Yeah. That's yeah. what kills me. Speaking of well, moves, I went ahead and put that, uh, the other article up on the screen and I don't know how you say her name, Sana Lee. Have you guys heard of her? She's been making. She's like the fat acceptance uh, spokesperson. Russia. She's disgusting. I can't. Uh, I've actually looked at this article. 
I'm past my limit, so I, I can't get the whole article anymore. But I went ahead and oh, put the, it in the, the chat. The Inquirer one, yeah. Yeah, the Inquirer okay. one. It's uh, it's absolutely hilarious. I, I actually listened to her TED Talk too, where oh, she, we talked about her. I was like, I'm not going to give myself ear cancer. Yeah, she uh, she is on a love seat, and she is as big as the love seat. I mean, I'm not joking you. Just, she is a very very big woman. Yeah. And, uh, She's well, and, and so by I mean, non-binary, am... she says that uh, if you don't think if you would uh, reject her, then you're a bigot. <laughs> yep. Well, check. I mean, it's it's pretty. <laughs> yeah, could put me down. Next. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it just cracks me up that it's like, whatever happened to you know? I don't know. You can't. If I don't like you, I don't like you. It's it's not uh-huh. you know or sexually you know she might be. Well, actually, I know she's not a very nice lady because of the way I've seen her speak and stuff like that. But this culture has got to the point where they can say, well, since you don't like me, that makes you wrong. And that's never, yeah. you know, 50 yeah. years ago, you know, if you didn't like me, well, suck my dick. You know, sorry about your <laughs> luck. I don't like now, you either. <laughs> I like me. And I, I think that's the right. inherent. Well, the, no, and it's it's. It's to me is all right. If we're gonna, uh, no, I, I hate to, I hate because I feel like I'm playing their game, right? But if we are, if I am gonna, right yeah. But I'll, I'll for for the sake of an argument, I'll play along. Um, if I'm gonna accept you, you should in turn be able to accept me, right? Now I don't accept you because um, I want nothing to do with you, and I don't want I don't want my children to think of you as any sort of role model or example. So if you don't accept me. I'm fine with that, and I accept that. So that means I'm not the bigot, but I am a bigot, so it's okay. Everyone's a bigot. <laughs> Everyone know. is a bigot. That's just the way it is. I mean, sorry, yeah. but so earlier you asked me about a, a job applicant or a group of them, and the one thing I didn't didn't bring up that I should have is that there are five protected classes that you you cannot discriminate against uh, as an employer: the race, color religion or creed, I mean, so religion, uh, national origin or ancestry, which is, you know, nationalists or ethnicity, their gender, their age, physical or mental disability or veteran status, right? So now does being morbidly obese count as a physical disability or limiting factor? Yes and no. Uh, It's mixed. You got mixed cases coming out. There's one in 2010 uh, where it was in Louisiana they found on behalf of an obese worker who was terminated. So they already had the job. Uh, but then there's another case in 2016 in the eighth circuit. I think that's near Chicago. I'm pretty sure. Um, basically a railroad worker had his job offer revoked because of his BMI was way too high for the safety sensitive positions, uh, on the railroad. So it's mixed. Um, it just, it's, it's kind of job dependent, but you know, we're, we're talking about fat and not, seriously obese um you know i I think i here's the deal there needs to be some kind of factual nexus for why you aren't hiring this person related to the job um that's usually usually it bmi can be a little dicey though i mean really it was invented for high schoolers but uh you know whenever you got because i know a guy that's just stacked i mean he's jacked as a motherfucker but his bi bmi shows him as morbidly obese Mm-hmm. Yeah, Mine's thirty one, which is uh, or it has my fat, I think, at thirty one percent, which is completely wrong, because it's it's based on BMI. Yeah, it's it's nuts. There's a that's it cracks me up because this guy is, I mean, he I wouldn't consider him super fit, but he's he's huge, you know, he's he's massive, and he has to pay extra insurance because his BMI is, and he's like, he, he always, he's like, man, I could lift this, I could do more, you know, run five miles and all this stuff, and these people would, can't even lift their own body weight. And <laughs> yeah, so I'm at 30, I'm 31.2, I just did it, uh, which is listing me as obese. So you have to hire me now, because I'm, in fact, you have to accept me and not hurt my feelings. <laughs> but no, I'm, I'm at like, I'm below 15% body fat, and I'm obese, according to a BMI. Yeah, well, I've seen your uh, quad shot, and you're definitely, if your legs are that cut up, then. Oh, I was going to say, Tex is a lot leaner in person than any picture you, anybody has ever seen. 
Oh, guys, thanks so much. Guys, yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, it's, it's, um, I, don't, I mean, uh, allow me to brag on you a little bit, good sir. Um, you know, okay. He's a little bit longer in the tooth than I am. Not by <laughs> too much. <laughs> we knew not by, that. Not by too much. Well, we knew that, right? Yeah. yeah. And, I mean, we worked out together while you were on a deload. Yeah, still. <laughs> and, and oh yeah, you're still in your deload. Well, no, I'm still in the cut. Sorry, the deload. Yeah, still in the cut. So yeah. the whole cut's a deload. Yeah, deload. And, and let's do 500 deadlift. Why yeah, not? yeah. All right. I mean, <laughs> nobody called us smart people. No. <laughs> but um, but no, I mean, like the man is putting in hard work, and and it's it's a it's something that I've talked about somewhat recently with some of my friends uh, in real life that you know age isn't a limiting factor when it comes to this thing. Now how you train changes mm -hmm. but the fact that you are training should not no. um, in fact as you get older training becomes probably even more important you know you can skip a couple workouts and go on vacation when you're in your 20s you can get away with it if your body is a lot more forgiving Dude, it's the coolest thing about what we do if you think about it like after you're maybe 18 your body stops growing you pretty much have all the hair you're going to have and then you're going to start losing it and you're, you know <laughs> what i mean it. i'm saying but your skin is as tight as it's going to get and you know everything after that you you kind of it starts just getting older but with strength training and weight training you can keep getting stronger all of your life i mean as long as you're not at your genetic peak by the time you're 24 then you know you're not gonna get stronger than that but if you start off at zero at you age 40 you can you can. Yeah, you can. You keep getting stronger <laughs> for the rest of your life, and you can keep losing fat for the rest of your life. That, that's pretty amazing. Yeah. You're no, not going to grow taller, though. Um, no, no, not going to grow taller. Sucks to suck, little short guys. <laughs> but um, if, you, if you get a bath mate, you know. <laughs> oh, God. I had <laughs> forgot about that. <laughs> well, it's ironic that you brought back that show. We were talking pre show about front squats. Oh, yeah. And Dr. Stud was the guy that really got me going on front squats. Oh, yeah. He, he was a beast on those. And he's he, a, he is a, he was a, he, he, he preached front squats really, really hard to the point yeah. where he almost, that was, that was what he did for his leg day. Yeah. And, um, and, you know, he would, he would hit hamstrings in other ways, but, you know, like if he was going to do squats, he was doing front squats. And I yeah. was like, wow, all right, let me give this a try. So on the, never, never tried the bathmate though. On the no. channel, <laughs> sure you have it. I have up the uh, the gains thread for this week, and I'm just uh, since Tex, you mentioned you got to go in about twenty. We'll go gotcha. ahead and yeah. get to the uh, you know recognitions for some of these people. Mm -hmm. um, we got to of course thank Mr. Jack for keeping it going, but we got a couple new. Uh, we're up to I want to say forty six people that are in the thread. Jeez, that's good. But uh, we got Mr. Jolly, Jolly Roger. He's actually in the chat. We got him going a couple weeks, or I think on the first show. He decided, and he's now posting, I want to say, three times or four times a week. Got to give big props up to him. Um, another one, we got another guy, a B BVK citizen. He's been around for a while, but he just started doing Wendler. He was kind of messing around with just, you know, just messing around. Now he's actually doing a, a regulated program. That's awesome. That's what I'm doing. If anyone cares, it's he, hit, he hit he uh, hit a 125 for 14 on overhead press. That's good. I mean, that's that's a nice little thing. Uh, and then we, of course, we got to talk about fire plug for a second. This dude is a super strong kid. He's one of the youngins. I think okay, a lot okay. of us are actually, you know, I want to say in our 30s, but I don't know for a fact how many people are I'm and how many my, people I'm aren't. In my 30s, yes. Me but, too. I'm in my 30s. <laughs> in your heart. In our heart. <laughs> he beat me the, to the race to 400 on, right. uh, on squat. He got that. And then um, uh, by bond. But uh, the one person, I, I don't see her on here, but Jax, she is, I think, the only girl that is actually posting right now on the threads. And she hit a 200-pound deadlift the other day. Nice. No kidding. Yeah. Big ups. Big yeah. ups to that. That's huge. We got this uh, new cat, Glycine Goblin. I don't know if he was around before, but he's newer to the thread since I've been around. And this dude is just shredded. He, uh, he's just got, I don't know, he's pretty shredded. Kind of impresses me. 
Enforcer Gaines came back. He's been gone for a while. Got to give big ups to him. He's hitting it again. And then another new guy is uh, Supreme Leaf. Uh, we, you know, he is a he is a maple monkey, so we'll go ahead and give him a minus <laughs> for that. But he's in the Gaines thread, so that's a good thing. And then our resident, we want to call him the doctor, even though he's not a doctor, is uh, Ruckus. And he has the worst handwriting ever, but... He's fucking getting those games. <laughs> he's, he's doing the handwriting games. He's posts. doing the old school games. My man. Yeah, there's, a, there's a few of them that yeah. still write it down. And then who was it? Was it Tidy Whitey? He Tidy. was he was analog for the was, longest time. Oh, yeah. He might he, still be. He would like he would write an album cover and take a picture of it or something. It, yeah. it looked like a, some kind of Elton John or Leonard Skinner album. He's like, it here's was my workout. It was cool. It it had style. We're trying to get Brand to measure his biceps. Come on, Brand. Dude, the dude's fucking arms are, <laughs> they're just massive. Brand, he's a big boy. I bet boy. you mine are bigger. He's a big boy, though, that brand. I mean, we, if I don't know if he's on a cut or what, but when he gets down to like 9%, he's going to be chiseled. Now, he's bulking right now. I think he's bulking until October is what uh, Ari's in. Always, always got to be different, Brand. Always yeah. got to do it. <laughs> well, I think he ended. You know, everybody's cutting in the summer, but not Brand. He's going to bulk up. I think he just ended his cut. I think he said that once July hits, his cut's over or something. I can't remember. And then we got a new guy, Davy Crockett, Triple D, Triple C. Love that. I love oh, it. I like that. That's and he's, uh, he's, it. he's getting it, too. And then, let's see, uh, of course, Mr. John Bronson. He actually yep, had a go that. at it yeah. with bro science. He actually had a go with it with uh, the Kawhi lifters, which, if you don't know, they're like a twink, uh, twinked, twink Twitter lifting sect. Okay. And, uh, Cool. We had to had help the brother out on that Doesn't one. Doesn't matter. Then, then, then we're friends. We're good. Yeah. Are, we, yeah, are we lifting? Then we're friends. All right. It's simple. Yep. Huh. And my man Raymond, he, uh, he's he been – I actually wrote a program for him, I want to say, three or four months ago. And this dude is just becoming huge. I mean, I just can't even, can't even put into words how big he's getting – for some reason, I haven't seen Wyatt post here. Wyatt's usually posting a lot. I think he's been... Wyatt's been busy with work. Yeah. Wyatt, Wyatt God bless that man. I know he's lifting. I know. Um, he he posts in Telegram. I just... Um, All Snake he, is he's around. He's more active in the Telegram. I say he's more active. I don't know what he does on Twitter. But I know he's active on the, the Telegram side of things. Yeah. And um, he's, uh, that man is killing it with his, with his IRL job stuff. Yeah. And then so. the Tom Kendrick, I guess he's got a race war coming up. I mean, a race coming up. And <laughs> he's a bicyclist. Ooh. He kills on the bike. So that's pretty awesome. Of course, we got We had to, whenever we've seen race, we got to put up race war. Um, let's see. Anybody else that I really think of? Oh, E.B. Kine. I want to say there's a few others. Of course, regular Joe, he, been post, he hasn't been posted yep. lately, but he's always at least he's active around. in the thread. Joe's always around. We're getting we're getting about sixteen, seventeen people that are consistently. Uh, you know, you know what the cool thing is. I don't recognize like a solid ninety percent of these names. That's a good. That's <laughs> a, that, no, that, that is cool. That's, that's this cool. flashes right back to our previous, our earliest conversation about this. Is you guys are doing this? Like, Tex and I started this thing. Yeah, we didn't even start it. I'm not even gonna say we started it because Doc was the original guy that said. <laughs> Doc, Doc coined the phrase there. gains posted. Yeah, yeah. A lot of people. Tidy, brand, a lot of people in there. Yeah. So, like, I can't, Tex and I can't take credit for All we did was a podcast. And well, we, we, all, it's, we did some t shirts, too. We did some t shirts. <laughs> we did some t shirts. That's true, too. I noticed that the uh, um, trademark has expired every day. So, so you guys have been getting a bunch of copies on that. I'm, I'm actually thinking about getting a t shirt, even though it's not an official one, but I feel that I've. Uh, Go for it. I've right. earned the. We give the Chinese people some money. The ability Russians. to wear it at least. <laughs> so it, what, you're talking about some of these guys. Uh, I heard Windler, and heard a lot of new guys. I, I'm going to throw this out because I got it from a friend at the gym, and it's for five three one. It's for starting strength, and it also has Cube Method uh, strength programs on there. And it's a website. It's a free site. You can donate if you want, but uh, I, I have yeah. But donate, donate. Uh, it's called Black Iron Beast, just like, you know, iron, but Black Iron Beast. And they have a bunch of little things you put in your maxes, and you just hit calculate, and it will calculate your Windler program, your starting strength, or your cube method program. 
if you're looking to get strong really fast uh, without having to do the math out of Windler's book and all of that. So for young guys that are looking to get strong, that's worked for me pretty well. And you can do anything you want around it, add, you know, full body, which is what I've been doing, do whatever you want and you can, you can get really strong and, and you can do it quickly. Yep. Yeah. Got to pull it up. I, I muted myself for a second. It says, get the book. It says, print this page. Yeah. It's got, holy cow. Look at all these templates. One, two, fuck, Jesus Christ. Yep. It's a, if you stall out on your current one, there, it'll give you something to go to. Yeah. It's got, wow. It's got a whole bunch of stuff. Um, and then you put in, wow, this is actually a very good. So I'll go ahead and put that in the uh, chat copy but yeah that's a wow that's, is, that, is that is that from our, our mutual friend that's not on any social media very good resource right it, there yeah it is it is yeah and, and uh, the thing i'll tell you on this that if you put in so you're going to get strong really fast and you're going to want to jump your max and if you read windler's book this is just 531 i read all of the books whether it's ripito but on 531 you'll get strong in the first cycle which is three weeks and then a deload and you're gonna want to go. Oh, I know my max is like 440. I know it. And you want you want to plug that in, but don't, because the book Windler says for your upper body, which is your your press and your bench press, you only add five pounds to your max, and then you have ten pounds for your squat and your deadlift that you add. And you do that each phase. So three weeks deload, add five five, add ten ten, and don't don't push it too hard. Don't like try to add fifteen or do anything like that. And you will. I promise you, you'll get strong beyond that. Um, it, it kind of sucks at first because you're like, well, I'm, I know I'm stronger than this, but why am I putting in just five and tens? But you, trust me to do it. it. It's the way to work because you can for, keep doing it and keep getting stronger. Yeah, for longevity purposes. That's something right. I, uh, I'm i learning myself is that just because you your max is that high doesn't necessarily mean uh, you should be hitting it all the time. That's for sure. That's right. Yeah. Well, it's, 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 text, text and I, it was one of the, when I was chasing the 405 squat for, for months, between yourself and Aurelian, you were like, stop maxing out every single week. Yep. And I was like, what are you talking about? How am I going to get any stronger if I don't push myself? And, you know, <laughs> Aurelian was like, oh, sit down, young man. And let me, you know, <laughs> you let me tell you something. <laughs> then let me tell you a story about how I can't walk anymore. Kind of I like, remember when I got off to my first car. Yeah, right. And I was just kind of like, okay, well, you're even injured. You're stronger than me. Even with like a hole in your uh, your guts, uh, you're stronger than me. Um, I maybe I should actually listen to you. And uh, he's you're right. It's it's pretty crazy what happens when you listen to people that are that, that are smart and they know what they're talking about. Yep. So. And people who can lift more than you. That's another right. Good one. Oh, I hate that. So I don't know about I know some people like crowded gyms. Some people like empty gyms. Some people like a, a, a damp, dark basement to lift in. Um, I hate being the biggest and the strongest guy in my gym. I hate it. I hate it. And it's one of the reasons why I absolutely fell in love with your gym, uh, Tex. Because yes. there are some beastly dudes in there. It's a headbanger's gym. It's a headbanger. Oh, man. Like, I walked in and I'm like, wow, I kind of feel a little small right now. <laughs> yeah. I'm not, a, I'm, not a, I'm not a small guy. I was like, well, ooh. All right. Well, that's, let's, there's no, no goofing around right now. So... Um, and that, that, that you asked about a crowded gym. It, it's good if it's crowded with a lot of good people. Yeah, it, I don't you know. mind that. But if yeah. it's crowded with a bunch of, yeah, you know, yeah. losers and nerds, it just makes me angry because now I got to fight for you know, now I got to fight for new stuff. You know. Yeah, we had uh, ooh, four people doing the powerlifting meet that we went to, mm -hmm. and two guys that were in the bodybuilding show. Yep. And we got another guy from the gym who's doing another one around here. And he, he, this guy is doing physique. He's at 170 pounds, 5% body fat, and he's eating about 1,500 calories a day. And oh. he's going on stage next weekend. Yeah. And when you have people like that, you, your excuses are nothing. Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't I'm even, I even spell that word. Oh, yeah. I'm on the treadmill like, God, this 2,900 calorie sucks. He's like, oh, really? Let me tell you about 15. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I did today for lunch? I smelled <laughs> bread yeah. he said he looks you know in the mirror and he's so flat because he's lost all his fat right and he's, he looks at himself he goes do you even lift like to himself because <laughs> <laughs> you know he's gonna carve up and his muscles will come back but it's like for right now he's like i look terrible i hate it i hate everything 
I recently um, switched uh, teams on my in my work. You know, we have four different teams. They call them our crews, whatever you want to call them. And uh, the driver, we were sitting there. You know, he's like, you know, I've noticed you've gotten you've gotten bigger within the last six months or so. And I was like, well, yeah, about three or four, but yeah. And he said, we started talking. And he told me he was 62 years old, and this guy is he's he's a very stout dude for being six in his 60s. You know, he's, he walks around, he's got his arms, his back so big that he can't put his arms down, you know. <laughs> he's the guy yeah. I was mentioning that his BMI is, you know, ri- ridiculous. He's like morbidly obese, but he's, you know, and he's in his 60s. And uh, he was telling me that, you know, at, at his best, he'd benched 440 for a double. Good. And I was like, holy shit. And he's like, yeah, we didn't we didn't ever do be- uh, deadlifts because it made your back blocky. You know, <laughs> I guess that was the the yeah. now, now, idea now, back in the day you know that. he's not necessarily wrong it's something that i've noticed as i've gotten leaner is that i'm, I'm i mean my only hope is that i'm gonna have to get wider in my mm. shoulders and my upper back because i have i have a very stout midsection now i was curious um, what he, did he mean your back gets blocky by the the lumbar yeah like, like, the lower back because lower whenever back. he was lifting he was all about right. uh you know that golden era figure mm-hmm. physique mm-hmm. you know and he said that deadlifts made it made your lower back square to where uh made your taper smaller right yeah, your your erectors get huge yep. and everything yeah yeah so i mean but he was saying that he uh he squatted 530 for a triple and he's like yeah i know my bench was for only 100 pounds lighter than my squat i'm like dude <laughs> 530 for a triple and i asked him how he did it and it cracked me up he's like five by five <laughs> I started just yeah. laughing my ass off uh-huh. whenever he's like, "You did five by five and he's like, oh, "I didn't care about bodybuilding. I didn't care about anything but getting stronger." And I'm like, "But you just got done talking about getting a block." And he's like, "Well, I didn't want to look bad." <laughs> <laughs> well, no, and it's 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 kind of funny because that's almost the exact opposite of my 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 long time um, kind of mantra of like I didn't care how strong I was. I cared how strong I yep. looked. And as I've gotten older. And that's somewhat has changed, but overall, you know, there is a balance. You can have both. You can be yeah. leaner. I'm not saying like, you know, 5% dicks can shredded lean because nobody wants to do that. Like you do it because there's that weird, crazy part of you that, that, you know, like, Hey, I'm going to go, I'm going to go throw my nuts out onto the stage. Fine. Good. One day, Tex and I are going to do a master show, and it's going to be miserable, but it's going to be amazing. You're all going to love it. Oh, yeah. You're going to love it. Love so the thing about strength that's important, though, is as you get older, you do have to start dropping. I mean, BMI is, is not a good measure of, of your health. It's not a good measure of your fat composition, but it actually is a decent measure of your mortality. Whether your muscle or your fat, if your BMI is huge, you're organs are going to struggle when you get older. And so you do need to size down. That's just the reality. Um, it sucks, but that's what it is. So that's where strength and, you know, fat loss become bigger and you can be strong and you can be lean and not necessarily huge and have a really high Wilkes, uh, as you get older and not have that BMI risk. So that's something to look at too. Yeah. I've actually went the opposite of Chad. I've always cared about just being strong because I was very light, you know, I was like, well, if I'm only going to be 160 pounds, I want to, at least lift like I'm 220 and now I'm like I just need to get bigger the easiest way to get stronger is to get bigger so <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, it's, it's it's that's true though like and it's I'm not a weak person I mean it's it's one of those things that like as you pack on mats and especially if you're doing it over a longer period of time you get the mature muscle right it's a it's a more dense muscle fiber Right. It's, it's true. It's, it's different, right? It's different it's, than like your your beginner gains where you just balloon up. Um, so you, you're, I don't necessarily have to. I can I can pick up a forty pound dumbbell and do a couple chest presses and I can get a pump. All right, cool. All right, well now I can now I can sit back and go a little bit slower, and and knock out heavier heavier weights at a at a safe reasonable pace where I'm not going to kill myself or injure myself any more than I'm already injured because, you know, surprise, surprise, the older you get, the easier it is to hurt yourself. Oh yeah. 
So especially if you're doing squats and deadlifts and haven't yep. done them in a while. I mean, if you're so th- th- we kind of started the show with this guy saying, well, don't don't train deadlifts unless you're trying to get stronger. Um, or if you're like me and pretty much everybody, it, it's your whole purpose of living is to deadlift. Then you probably just want to deadlift it's, all your life and never lose, <laughs> lose the ability. It's almost it's almost it's almost like we want to deadlift until we're dead. Every yeah no totally shut up yeah. So are you? Uh, I, I you never go did. ahead and plug those guys because they're no awesome. no yeah no <laughs> no no okay. All right. Are you sumo? Do you do you pull sumo Tex? I I do. I prefer sumo. Um, I can do both, and I I do. I train both. Um, but so one of the things this is on Muscle PhD as well. He actually kind of did a leverages study. If you are over fifty one percent leg for your total body height, uh, meaning the good Lord split you high then you're better off on sumo for leverages. And if you are 51% or lower uh, leg, meaning your torso is at least 49 or higher, then you're better off conventional. Hmm, and that's, that, yeah, that's just that a general rule. I did a sumo for the first time this week. And I've it, the inner legs were insane. Like the, you know, I've never felt oh, my it's a, adductors, it's a, I think, would be. Muscles. Yeah, it really hit the adductors or abductors, whatever you call it. Mm-hmm. And it mm-hmm. made me feel like I was a, like doing a plie or something because yep. <laughs> you're like trying to put your toes out and you're trying to like bring your shins. Oh yeah. You know, uh, oh, for sure. Perpendicular or parallel with the bar. It was like a very uh, odd movement, but first time it's you ever odd. do it, it's, it's, it's supposed very, to feel odd, I guess. Yeah. Well, you're you're using different muscles too. I mean, you're you're using more of your adductors. You're using the, your outer quads more, the sweep, and all the way up kind of the side, almost like close to the hammies. It's just it's a different different deal. I, I was going to ask you, Sisyphus, though. Are you are you, you're trying to grow your legs, like oh, yeah. them bigger. Okay. Yeah, so, I have. I, I was born. I'm on part of Team No Calves. So like, like everyone, <laughs> literally everyone. But if you're yeah, over I've, six feet, you're going to have a problem with calves. That's that's just going to be it. That's true. And it is un- right? unless you do. Uh, I so I. Guys that ride road bike generally have pretty okay calves. Soccer players have amazing calves. And I don't know what it is about those particular, uh, I guess, sports. Run, but I've, I've noticed a trend with soccer players um, and bikers. And I think, you know, here, shot in the dark, they run on their toes a lot. There's one other or, group you missed. There's a group with big calves you missed. Dancers? Fat girls who got skinny. Ooh, you know, <laughs> why actually, why yeah. why it has made that exact same point. It's very true. If you want it's good science. calves, balloon up to a solid 300 yep. pounds yep. and then cut down. That's right. And that's the only way. They have huge calves because they're basically doing calf raises every time they take a step. Yeah. I, uh, yeah. I like the Steve Shaw. He's a big, hairy, hairy ugly dude, is, is, I think is Instagram, but... He said, "You want bigger calves? Deadlift 500 pounds." You know, I mean, but he's a he's pure. Now he's doing all sorts of crazy stuff. But at first, you know, five years ago, he was all about the the powerlifting. You know, only doing the big three. I just I don't know. I've always done just the big well, not the big big four, and really cared about that stuff. And now I just feel like putting volume on muscles that I haven't is going to help. You know, doing curls is is going to help. It's it's got to. You know, mm-hmm. I mean, it's something i haven't really done but it's neglected i guess i don't know so there's a guy that you can follow uh that's pretty good his name is dante trudell and he's written for like muscle and fitness t nation he's he's a gigantic guy and he does like consulting for bodybuilders and, and hollywood actors and whatever but he's he's like a true bro he's been around for for quite a while and if you follow him uh he might be on twitter i know he's on instagram but he basically is one of these guys he owns true nutrition And what he does is he has these little tips and one of them is like biceps. He just, it basically says, look, I know what people say, but this is what works for me. And he has little bicep tips, but one of the ones for legs that he had for tall guys. And he points out like Tom Platts and Sean Roden and anyone who's, who's really tall, that's having a hard time developing their legs. Uh, I'm not talking about calves really, but your quads. He basically was saying you, you need to squat low bar with your, you know, kind of rip a toe to get those adductors. But if that even that doesn't work, use the hip adductor adductor machines and develop your your interior adductors. Um, and he's kind of right because if you look at look at Tom Platt's photos, his adductors are huge. Um, so if you have longer legs and they're just not coming, 
like leg extensions aren't working, you're squatting a bunch, but it's not happening. Throw those in there to get that third muscle because it's it's basically what it's for. So you've yeah. got your uh, your lateralis and then the teardrop and then the medialis for your quad. And then I guess the adductor is part of your quad. I don't know. But it, most people don't develop it because they'll squat with their legs close together or they don't duck out right or they don't go down full range of motion. If you work those up, your legs will get bigger. Your quads will. Yeah, I call those machines the good girl, bad girl machines. I, I resisted them. I don't want to get on them, but they're they're good. They work. Yeah, they, they definitely are. You know, if it, it, there's a stigma behind using them, that's for sure. <laughs> you know, and that's the thing. There always was for me until I went to my, my new gym and I see these power lifters. They'll get on them before they do squats. I, yeah. I need to ask them why, but that it's kind of their warm up. They actually just work their adductors a little bit before they go into heavy squats. It's a weird thing, but if they're doing it, then you really no one looks gay. So we're like, yeah, we'll do them too. So we're at the nine thirty mark. Um, text. I know you were talking about you had to go. I do. I have to bail, gentlemen. Thanks so much for having me, man. It's been a blast. I'll be back. Is there anywhere? Is yeah. Uh, are you on the Instagram? Fun. I'm not. I'm okay. I'm off right now. But um, you know, petition Twitter, tell them to to let us back on. I don't know. I, <laughs> 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 no, and, and it's we've joked about we've joked about maybe coming back one day, figuring something out. Um, no, and, and it's we miss you guys, and we 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 through proxies and such, we'll pay attention. We do pay attention. We have an idea of what's going on. And we. Yeah. Take, take this message from us, though, like as we're back right now on the show. Lift with each other in real yes, life. Just do it. Just quit tripping about docs. You know, trust yourself, run your OPSEC, but just get out there and do it. it it's 10 times better. The games posts are great because they keep you lifting. It's awesome, but it's 10 times better to build that network in real life. Yeah. No, and it's, it's the people that um, want us off the internet and they want their safe space, um, they screwed up. Because we were perfectly fine being anonymous guys on the internet lifting weights until they said we couldn't do that anymore. So guess what? Now we're 10 times stronger because yeah. we're together. They had a shadow band. Like we weren't even reaching new people at that point. Yeah. Like not really. We're, we're in such a better place. And, you know, like Tex and I are talking about making, getting together and, and spending holidays together, bringing our families together, uh, like an annual thing. Or yeah. a semi-annual thing. Like we're going to go hunting together. We're going to like, like they're going to do birthdays yeah. together. To not name names, but there are some other guys from the Lifwaffa that were going to join us recently yes. that, that will. So, I mean, it's, it's, yeah. you got to do it, guys. It's worth it. Yeah, for sure. So, so we'll go ahead and uh, cut, her, cut her out. I'm really happy to that you showed up, Tex. I really appreciate it. First time talking to you myself, but you guys started something that, I mean, has done. It's done a lot for me, and it's done a lot for, you know, like you said, 90% of these people you never even heard of. Um, yeah, it's done a lot for us, so we really appreciate it. And Chad, you know, I, I talk to you often, but uh, Love it. I, I've told you many a times, I mean, I, I used to be a low life, and if it wasn't for the gains threads, it definitely, you know, the pushing of you guys have definitely helped uh, a lot of people, including myself. So I want to say thank you. No, Hats off you guys to you helped guys. yourselves. Yeah, and thanks for having us. I mean, you're, yeah, you're keeping yeah, it going. No, thank and, you. That's what it's all about, man. It just spreads. That's that's what it's supposed to do. But with that, I will bid you guys good day, and you guys have fun. Uh, stay tuned in a couple weeks. We'll have another episode, and I think Chad will probably be here. And uh, we'll, uh, should be. Yep. So Chad, and then we'll find um, uh, Marcus. Or Aurelian is having a baby, so he will not be around for a little bit and we don't want him to be around we want him to be messing oh, around with that baby that man bond, bond him with this kid you with know that's one of those things you know person. we'd love for him to be here but you know what i mean that's way more important than sitting on a podcast with us yeah. <laughs> so for everybody that showed up uh, i really appreciate it and we'll see you guys uh, in a couple weeks any any last words no thank you for having me and just just keep lifting guys getting the gains thread post up meet each other help each other out stay positive you got to stay positive all right and we're yeah. out of here <laughs>